I think the recognition of the the challenge that the call of the Lord requires that's been alluded to by you brothers, you know, the, the fact that the, the nature of mankind, not only throughout the generations, but obviously now and in this time is even more so, um, present the this the 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 challenge to our own ideas of how things should be and how things should go is is i don't know just the recognition of of the of the the ask of the lord for his people and what that entails uh it's not often explicitly stated where you know you guys are talking in these broad strokes which is good and necessary but the the individual requirement when the rubber hits the road kind of situation is you know i I don't know surely i'm not trying to say that i fully grasp or understand or have a anything really special to offer but but i i i i can tell you that the gravity of it the reality of the of 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 it is is so significant and i think the 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 modern christianity and the modern way in which we've been raised we hear all of these things and we say oh yeah sure of course and then we fail to recognize Mm. the the fundamental change mm. that has to be wrought mm. and then played out and and I I don't say that as like a I, I well I do I, I say it in in you know there's a there's a fearfulness in it mm. but it's not a fearfulness that can't be overcome or that the Lord has not made every allowance for mm. is people to walk in that freedom and in that power but the requirement is still high. It's a, it's a high requirement. Mm, it is. So mm. anyway, I, I don't know. I just, uh, when we're challenged mm. by the Lord, mm. because uh, it, it's, again, as has been talked about and prayed and, and so well uh, expressed, to take joy in that and to take that as such a, a blessing and uh, uh, an opportunity to to gain in the Lord, mm. not not for not for ourselves, but but to truly gain in such a <laughs> other otherworldly way. I, I, I don't know how to quantify it. I don't know how to express it, but I, I feel it. Like I know it. Mm. And it's a and it's a simultaneous. You know, it's a it's a fearful thing, but it's a, an amazing, wonderful, mm. um, beautiful thing that i want <laughs> you know mm. but we often we often you know tim talking about the farmer and mm. sometimes we don't want to go through the work to get to it because it's it's challenging <laughs> so anyway i don't know i just that's good uh, the sobriety of the moment is something we often talk about but it's 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 because it's it's real <laughs> it is so, real yeah. So that's I just want to express that. No, that's you know. a very good good observation. I like the the practical side you brought in is Robert he the root what it means, you know. So and then um, those things unfortunately um most of the time we we lead to our own uh, imagination or our own uh, preparation, if you will. Even some are overzealous or some may be lagging behind. Uh, but overall, that is the beauty of to have a, a family, a maturity leadership. I hope that is we have that in our midst. But that's not yeah. only the things that matters I'm talking about. This is a pattern for God's people in the world. We're never supposed to, to, to be a church without it. 
uh, to be a culture, heavenly culture church without the other. But unfortunately, we can see, uh, mention the word called idol, idolization of ministry. Uh, idolization with that narrowed down the gifts, knowledge, for example. That is a mark characteristic of past few movements or great advancement, what we call the Christian norm. All changes, you know, shift the changes. The Reformation is about knowledge. You know, uh, then we in have a societal change in different movements, in different terrains, in different generations. And now we're down to the last century and even more, we see the restoration gifts. But if, what do people draw to? You know, they draw not because of teaching anymore. They want to see miracle signs. But I, I think the market, marketly characteristic in the coming age will be God's wisdom. I'm not talking about the wisdom in general terms. I'm talking about the wisdom that literally James and Jesus recommended as, or Paul, you know, talking about the wisdom is embodied, the manifold wisdom that we give to the church, right? So, so they have to have it to be a functional and a mature church. And all the services, the gifts, whatever, supposed to have it, the full knowledge of Christ, which is the embodiment of God's wisdom. More than in exhorting his song or have his song fulfill his mission through his death, resurrection, and uh, eventually ascension and installment. But a wisdom that it is a f- there from that it become a grace or an administration grace, am I? So there's a provision, this grace to enable the people on earth as his people, as his church, his body in a sense. There is a way to do it. There is a way, cohesive way to do it. But again, you know, the key is a vision. You know, I think the few days ago, I'm, 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 I think it last, I'm not sure, you know, the, yeah, a couple of days, nights, I was talking to Nicole, in the middle of the talking, I was trying to describe certain teachings or engagement, the spiritual, in this case, maybe discipleship, whatever the word you call it, it doesn't really matter in the end of the day. I don't think, it, you know, for example, Abraham and said, I'm going to disciple Isaac. You know, and I, you know, Timothy go to follow Paul around to have a helper, young man, and Paul going to set aside and say, I'm going to disciple you, you know, stuff like that. So, so it's, yeah, but they are definitely understand a certain dynamics, whether in a family setting, the impartation wisdom we're talking about, or, or culture, if you will, or in a, in a service setting that is ministerial, environment. But there is a fundamental undergirding why is a natural family, God has said you set apart. And right. So the other is 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 it's more than outside in the Gentile world, but God said, hey, you are even different than the old mode that in Jerusalem where James and Peter has a say. You guys start something totally new in the Gentile world as this is a spearhead God's all this work across the ages to include all mankind to his, to, his, to become his people. So you got to pay attention what you carried, what you exemplified. And it was with that weight and clarity or rather vision that Paul included young people like Silas, Timothy. And then that kind of clarity you don't just ascribe to in Paul's situation or in our situation or just prescribe to you know to any other people and it cannot be cheapened or mistaken as if it's a some 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 teaching some 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 format some some ministry or set up you have to have it you know you have to have that entrustment that manifold wisdom that meant to be a portion of the church that it will equip the church into maturity. Now that being said, so how you 
end in that place. Now we recognize when we're young, when God said, this is your call, this is what I'm going to do with you and your family, your associates. We are excited. Mindedly so. Wonderfully so. And many are excited with the message of sonship, with the message of kingdom, with the message of glory through, um, you know, the ministry of a sonship or discipleship. But I, I think, uh, you know, I my observation, except a few of us have been excited with discipleship. <laughs> I hope you are. Not seeing that today I'm discipling you. I mean, disciple again, it's not a format. It's not about the seasonal arrangement. It's about there's a culture behind it. You know, there's a culture behind it. It was Abraham taught Isaac in a sense. It was Paul taught Timothy. It was not just scanned around. The Paul so careful about the culture or the setup of discipleship. He said, I don't want to lay a foundation on anyone else, a foundation. I don't allow others to disturb my fundamental relation with you as a discipler. I mean, as a teacher, you know. So, uh, you, you know, it's not just you have a gift good enough, you have a ministry, you have a passion for the Lord good enough. I want you guys to settle down to receive wisdom that we carried. And when you settle down, it's a time for me to truly teach you or engage with you. And we understand uh, you know the 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 church that seasons that we uh, witness uh, and the the, the 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 kind of church and if you will on different strains, different characters, diff, you know this day modern information age everywhere you can see and see how they they doing their thing. <laughs> it's a it's a it's, I'm not saying in any critical way. I'm just there is a there is a good <coughs> opportunity for us to really observe what they try to teach or what they really marked for. You know, you should arrow your marker or something. For example, recently, I respect the brother and the sister, but it has been a huge concern through the years in my private assessment, if you will. And that assessment is not personal because God gave me a personal duty, almost, privately, to pray for the certain person, certain brother. We can call this word good-hearted prophet. Now, I'm not saying that self-assigned for that duty either. It was because a particular dream, you know, the dream, talking about the, the school, the halls, the moving the foundation, the halls, stuff like that, you know, that, that temple set up, in a sense, which in the beginning had no clue what it's really about. And the later days, I began to understand is about the culture change, you know. The ministry has to change. But in that, I have different brothers. I recognize they are not my natural brothers. They are rather different personalities, if you will, in through my dream. They represent a different grace or different seasons or different attitudes, rather. You engage with the business of founding. And um, and uh, from that dream, I I'm just going to take a free form today, talk to you from my heart because certain things relationally uh, in our circles and converge together to 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 come to head in a sense, not head in a sense bad or good. Let's not judge with that. I rather through team and the things I may continue to share. It's about examining the fruits. And if the fruits are examined, another season come up, another direction or need come about. And I will tell you on the front, is that everything about us that truly exercise our spiritual response to the safeguard of the coming generation. You got to recognize the coming generation whether they are aware or not, and as of today, their personalities are involved in interest, they don't necessarily fully comprehend what we did. Sacrificially, I had to use that word, sacrificially. We give up a lot of other engagement, other desires, other versions of life 
for really laying our down, down our life for them. It's not because we have a community, we have some endeavors, business wise. Rather, we I think God intended for us to be、uh, a new expression, if you will, how to do generational, cross generational buildings. You know, a family culture, basically. That's often in today's society, especially with them. Confusing voices and expressions. How God works in the midst of people, through the leadership, the voices around us. It can be very, very, very suddenly. Um, um, what a word! You almost you have to contend, you know, for the validity. What do you do? The young people, fortunately, until now, we have safeguarded them from some chaos. But they begin to grow up, you know. They begin to to involve things, especially in the information age. You can't you can't hold them back from those things. I, I welcome them to look at those things, you know. So, but at the end of the day, how they conduct their spiritual life, spiritual relationships, there has to be a vision. There has to be a common ground of Awareness and agreement that God is doing a special thing, not because we said it so, as many would foolish claim God is doing something unique, special. Then you look at the substance, faith is not too much. One vision, one one dream, one some inspiration, but for us that's not the case. God has been persistent, consistent, without variation almost, has. Cut the path for us through the jungle, through the wilderness, and we we in a garden today. You know, you do garden, you do things differently. You don't allow weeds or foxes, those kinds of things, to continue to come in and go. I <laughs> mean, do whatever you want. You know, welcome. You know, God going to use you, or God going to use me for you. I suggest there's a reason why there's a watch tower, there's a walls built, right? So, and there's a careful planting of the win a vineyard. Now, is that has to do with a merely natural family or involved with others? Rather, I suggest not. But you can see the trend, the peasing, the peasement, the the lurement, if you will, of those old ways. We continue to think God is going to flourish us or have us be used. Some of us, at least, in the old ways, engage relationships. As success, as some unaware, things is defaulting to that's how we do things. That we're supposed to do those things. Well, there are some people around us, even through our misses, never wake up. Show great contempt to the thing God really entrusts to us. They never wake up to what God wants us to be. They never wake up to the grievous consequences of their own ways and their compromise to certain ways. To the young people, it's already hell bearing. But it, what about the days to come? In such a world confused. And we're scandered. Some days to come, you might have found yourself. The world is not going to have a place for you. You know, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm talking about we don't have a time for war, famine. Our planning the future is still on the <laughs> on the charter. Of past generations, I propose to you that is a very dangerous way to plan for the young ones, young young ones' future. Their life, their time was so dramatically and so terribly different than ours. A time of peace, a time of repose, the time still we as a Christian, as one who uphold certain moral values. Or standard of being who you are as God's people is allowed, you know, is accommodated. 
is not overtly criti criticized as much we feel marginalized in society and culture, but persecution has not started. You know, people now say that's evil people. That is bad people to society. That is a bad influence to society. And we have still have the, the freedom to say, I don't want a bad influence actually from society influence my people. That is still a freedom for us, a standing we can make for our young generation. But imagine the days to come, this kind of allowances, this kind of standing will, will, will not necessarily be easy anymore. And it will not be easy. You know, I remember the early days I talked to John about, we were encouraged by the picture in Jeremiah, I think it came as well. We all have encouragement from this. You know, John, the picture was uh, when you run a food, food, food man with a, 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 a lamentation somewhere. I think that teams, teams, uh, teams, uh, that making theory, I remember Tim visited that uh, lamentation portion, so so crushing to his soul. And uh, but it was a beautiful thing, you know. So John and I have some serious reflection on this as well. So tar with me to this is a especially for older young young ones with us. Pay attention to this portion. You will know your where your father came from. <laughs> your <laughs> lamentations in the um, man in twenty two three twenty two. I always say God's mercy is new every morning, but uh, um, we never think about the contest. Why the pronounced in twenty two three twenty two said. Amen, hallelujah. Right, rather, let's see this. In 16, he, he has broken. There's more to leading to this terrible <laughs> juncture of, of a soul. He's broken my teeth with gravel. God had trampled me in the dust. God did that to me. <laughs> there is a complaining heart here. I've been deprived of peace. I've forgotten what the prosperity is. Seems he's a cursed man in the world, as far as God goes. So I said, a bitter soul now, my splendor is gone, and all that I have hope from the Lord, all gone. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them. I will remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I hold hope. Because what he called to mind, because the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. I'm still here, <laughs> for His compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Weed is your fist bones. I said to myself, God is my portion of so fruit. I will wait for him. Blessed are those who wait on the Lord. May we ask you this is a simple question. When we think about God's grace is new to me every morning, what identification be what kind of contest to receive that new grace? I and mean, in Jeremiah, it was a terrible trying, seems, uh, you know, in a cage, I can never get out. But it, it was enduring, basically, you know, flickering wake in the darkness, in the cold. Five, at 25, he said, the Lord is good to those who hope in him. That hope to the one who seek him. It's good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Not noisily, not predicting God will save your nation because you pray hard, or God is going to reverse your generation because you desire it, or God is going to make a big movement because you proclaim it. Then you look at your own life. 
those who proclaim, declare, or decree whatever they said, let me look at your life. How much you really know God? How much you have allowed your soul and your own ways, your own understanding, dealt by God's early? I don't see much. You talk about it. Why you don't talk about it? Why you don't think that is the most important thing to talk about it in your life? For your followers, for your students, for your hearers, audience. Why always promise good things, nice things, things so grandiose? Why always exceptional moments? You know, I'm talking about this, facing those, the voice of foolishness, if you will. We proclaim character, we proclaim we can endure, and we we try to warn God's people to say that we need to face in hard times. We need to have our young people, especially those who follow our ministry or teachings, to, to fundamentally settle in the heart of heart who they are. But I think I use a picture for we don't want the diamonds go through the pressure, the fire of the deep. We just want the shining glass, the shining stones, you know, out there. As the lion's shining, it must be God. Therefore, we're scribes and deliver our young people to false altars of a human. Believism, easy believism. When we discipline our children, when we condition our lives, when we devote ourselves into the solid, the substantial, fundamental changing, world changing things. Because you are the hope of the world, you are the light of the world. We, we don't feel being used by God, being fruitful in God, being excited about it, huh? being joyful about it. I know I suffer the thing, so I speak more about my own confession here. But may God continue to rebuke me <laughs> and weaken me and seize on me of those false expectations. Above all, let me not hear those chatters anymore. Let me see them as more than the fog, the sun going to come up and disappear, you know. They are poisoned. They are gas, you know, the poison is gas. I want to get out of that place as soon as possible, at least blow those things away. Because they're not good to be around. They're going to poison me. They're going to numb me. They're going to lead me to death. It's not just a fog, you know, you probing a little bit, it doesn't do any harm to you. But no, it's more than that. It more than makes you stumble. More than can trip you, but it can it trap you, I'm sorry. It, it can, it can, it can, it can. If you leave it alone, it will poison you, you know, you got to make you the dead. Forgive me, you sharp words. I, I, I'm a little bit poetic, you know, I, I use the sharp images, but I try to enlist you the truth. The truth of the matter is this kind of messengers and this kind of messenger messages, they have numbed the fundamentals of believers' life. We have literally shift the gears. What the faith, what the hope, what kind of uh, expectation life look like? What an expectation like that? And we think in our generation here, as ministers, think they were able to make a great stand in the time of Hitler, for example. 
No, they were not. You look at the we. So quickly fade away. But we have beautiful teachers from that generation. God bless America and bless our generation with we don't want to listen to them. We pay no regard for them. That is a shame to this today's Christianity. And the noise they are making. But God bless us. May He preserves us to a place of truth and sincerity. Eh? We don't have to be showy. <laughs> Be yourself, in a sense. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. God can deal with it. But make your heart, make your vision, settle with God. Uh, don't never apologize or explain to anybody. You, do, you don't need to. Ben, you pray for us. Yes, Heavenly Father, we, we cry out our hearts. We lift them up to you, Lord. We... We confess that we have fallen short. We have fallen short on many occasions. Lord, we have known what is right and have chosen our own ways. We have desired your goodness without the work that is required. Lord, the good work that you have portioned for your people, that you would give every grace and power needed to accomplish. Lord, may we not continue in a way of that idolizes the self, that idolizes our own ideas of who you are and what you have for our small lives. Lord, for without you, our lives are less than small. They're nothing. Without you, Lord, we... We are truly lost. Lord, without you, we are scattered in, in the sea of humanity, Lord. So I, I ask that for myself and, and for your people, Lord, that your the truth of your way, Lord, that we would not resist that we would be quick to repent, that we would be quick to recognize and, and look at the innermost places in our own hearts, that you would reveal those hurtful ways, those wrong ways within us. And Lord, that we would be quick to affirm your revealing way and to turn to you with such joy, with such Holy passion, Lord. Indeed, we, we, we say the words, but we, we want clean hands. We want pure hearts. We want to be holy and separate unto you. Mm -hmm. Lord, we see all around us, it is very easy to be drawn astray, to be pulled aside, to be distracted. Lord, even to be distracted by things that we think are good, Lord, we see now many who claim to love you and know you, pursuing their own ends and calling it you, pursuing their own ideals and, and, and putting your name on it. And Lord, we know that that is not pleasing to you. In fact, you hate it. So Lord, may we not be found in that place but be found, Lord, in a quiet, receptive place with open ears and open hearts to receive the truth of your glory and your way, Lord, your power and grace. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, but we also thank you for the times when your mercy and your grace changes. And when the requirements change, Lord, for that means that you are, con are moving and you're working. Lord, we want to partner with you in that work. 
Lord, may, may those who truly call on your name find you, Lord. Mm. And may our hearts and our, and our actions, Lord, that, which, that, that we do, mm. Lord, the, the, the thoughts that we think, may they be pleasing to you. Mm. And may we truly reject the ways of the world and the ways of man mm. and the ways that we formerly thought were of you that are not. Mm. We thank you for revealing them in greater ways in this time of evil that is spreading throughout the world. Mm. Lord, this evil that has been propelled forward by those who would call on you as their God. And Mm. yet they are friends of the enemy. They are friends of the devil. Lord, may we not be found in that camp. Mm. So Lord, bless your people. And Lord, we bless your name. We, we, we want your glory to be known. Mm. We want your ways to be known mm. among our people, among our, the next generation, mm. and unto the world. Mm. May, may we not run ahead or lag behind, but mm. be in lockstep with your spirit. Mm. Continue to light the path before us. Mm. And Lord, we bless it. In Jesus' name. Man. Amen. Thank you, brother. Let's move on. I'm just... Uh, not try to, to to try to build a contest for common understanding and listening our mess, our little group. God bring closure to a season that recognize that is the reality. You know, so I know that is there are many questions can be asked uh, and can be presented. We'll ask you know, especially relation to our memories, and we'll answer you. We'll tell you what happened, why. And hopefully we can receive some correction and admonishment. And even, um, you know, if, if, if good things, we encouragement and, right? and a solidarity from you. It don't withhold to ask you those questions. And, uh, you know, if you, uh, but again, let every question or curiosity be addressed in an orderly fashion. We don't want the gossiping, chitty chatty, those things. But we also need to elevate in the end of the day what God truly is doing, what He has been doing, what His purpose is for. Is a grace new for us as the old passed away. What is grace where we are? The shallow waters is gone. Now's the time to flow in the deep. Now it's time to plan to build. Our job, as much we try to maybe sound critical or point to certain things, our our intention was never, at least for me. To, to 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 tear down, to undo others, what they're doing, you know? So the only thing that needs to be done, it's like a vision is obscured. Mindset is confused. There is walls breaking down. There is a fox is running around. Watch the tower. It lost its sight. I mean, talking about the watchman, search is is asleep. We all ascribe all those failure to myself, okay, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. But in general, our body, uh, we have the body chosen by God. This vineyard, this beautiful garden, this thing has to be continued, put in the right place. Moses directed it to be there, but it has to continue to 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 play the role to to make it effective, productive. It's not for our benefit. It's for the entrustment to the fruitfulness in the vineyard. And I propose anybody come around said this not need to be done. There are other things to be worked on or good good for them. <laughs> so I'm not trying to be ugly here. I'm just saying, hey, you're not you're not you're not you're not subscribed into the same vision. 
uh, and I like John, what he said, John, can you help me out? He said, not uh, unity at any cost or something. Like that. Can you help me to with that statement? Yeah, sorry, brother. Uh, it's uh, heard uh, something so early in my walk. It's not unity at any price. At any price. Yes, we want to unify everybody. <laughs> And work with anybody. We want to volunteer and be a helper to others. We don't want to be lead or uh, whatever. So that's always my, I hope it's my posture, my heart. <laughs> I'm willing to be led and assist anyone. If God is in it. If God's call, give to me or give to the, through the entrustment is able to accommodate those things. <laughs> Not a swallow, not exhort or, or whatever, you know, <laughs> but to, to, to merge together to be one. That's many word to be one is always God's vision. Many fountain heads, I mean, many fountain streams into one fountain head. That's what we try to accomplish here in our midst. But if the succession, the efforts, and the involvement is that what we're doing here don't need to be preserved and first to be established. Let's do otherwise. Since so says those who don't know what they're doing, the lawless or purposeless, rather, and they showed a great content to God because we have never shined away. To tell them what we want to do. We have never withhold the education God through the years, what a God wants to do through us. So why you show disregard for those things? Who made you so? What do you think here to relate to us? We're together, here is a four. What a four? Where are you going? Who inspired you, maybe? That's a good question to ask. If it's not God, excuse me, I'm going to read the flag. I want to look at it. I want to dig the roots. I do not know where you came from. Where you're going. Why are you doing it? By the way, how you do it, I'm also going to have a say. <laughs> for you? No, not for you or for me, for different opinions, clashes. Even the culture clash will not confine or define this kind of things. It's God. It's the thing that God wants to do. The thing you treat as holy. That means we are perfect, or we are holy, it's holy. Far from it. One of the things God wants to do is a peculiar thing, is a holy thing. And the light gave to us before us, when I'm talking about the coming generation, their wishing of life, their values of life, their efforts of life, on a holy thing. I don't expect them to God are going to be all <laughs> perfect or without struggle, without challenges, far from it. But I will be like Abraham, looking beyond his own generation, his own affairs. I will be like Moses, looking beyond his own terrain of life, or the generation he has dealt with. Oh, David, you know, look beyond Solomon and the temple that it will be where we're glorious. And look for my reward in the kingdom of God. And look for my fruitfulness. Maybe as a saw one seed, it changed one person's life, you know what? <laughs> like Abraham did. <laughs> But that means my reward is small. My fruitfulness is small. Who can despise the daily small thing? I'll make sure the things I do and invest in life 
I'm tailor-made for the destiny that God had given to me. And I, I will share with you the wonderful, beautiful um, testimonies that we have. God, as a leader, you know, as one who lead you, I, you know, as I almost like in the team, Paul, Moses' heart, we don't overpraise you, <laughs> we don't flatter you. We oftentimes come with seems disapproval and seem a little bit critical, because I know that you already qualified, you already worthy, you are the one. <laughs> You're the chosen. You are the elect. You're the one going to do the job. Therefore, I'm not going to give you the template or temperament or teach you or direct you or engage with you as one still no no outside or blurry or uncommitted. But you are committed. You are chosen. Your life is set apart, and you're doing mightily fine, <laughs> mightily fine. But there are things has to be fitly joined together. <laughs> things has to be growing to fuller measure. <laughs> and uh, we still have some iron shop and iron to do. We still have, you know, the early vision I had is about the sword, am right? The mighty sword dealt with, then the mighty eagle eat on it, you know, eat the fire on the sword. Then the sword dwindled, dwindled, and not dwindled, but, but rather transformed to be uh, just another eagle. That's my vision. That's my longing. <laughs> No godly servant is a self-fulfilling person. That's impossible. <laughs> you know, it's the beauty for me and the honor privilege for me through high lows up the downs and to find in each one of you, especially the core leadership we have here, including Ben. <laughs> God told me each one of you who you are. Therefore, the world, yourself, you think about, you have a different opinion about yourself. I don't care. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what God going to do. I have to see the end of the story in a sense. <laughs> I don't pair my relation with you or design my relation with you. I hope you understand what's truly that is about in my heart. Because of what do you think it is? Or what I want to be? <laughs> Far from it. I know who you are in the Lord. I know what God wants you to be. And I know that when I invest in the vision of God, that the calling God has for you, I will never, never become fruit, uh, fruitless, <laughs> unproductive. That was a, this kind of relationship. I believe God wants each one of you to be most enlightened with, but to dedicate your life with. Now listen, listen to me. <laughs> there is a truth in Jesus when he said, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, means that there's a culture here, there's a we here, okay? Everything will be added on to you. But you can never allow this priority, this this we <laughs> engaging. And here we're always talking about the merely personal life because the kingdom of God and righteousness here all is about the relationships. The core is about how to build a, a culture relationship as, as, as expression. How God does things. <laughs> how God wants his people to be, to relate to one another. Now, don't be challenged by certain word of mercy and admonishment when God talking about the heart and the heart of Pharisees. Am I talking about the, 
you know, be be sympathetic with the poor, be sympathetic with with the disadvantaged, be sympathetic with the broken. I'm not talking about those kind of ministry here. I'm talking about the on the other side of the spectrum. You see a poor man, include the poor man in God's household. Where are he gonna be? Is still poor, needy, shattered, unworthy, or uh, broken? Or are you going to make him a, a wholesome son of God, free from all bondages of self? No more perversion. No more self destruction. No more whatever. No more the weight of the world upon that soul, but a liberty son of God in the kingdom. I mean, there lies. Which is should be the center, or should be the epicenter of a cultural expression? Who should it represent? Which one represents the true picture of the kingdom of God in His work of redemption? Obviously, not the beginning, not the starting step. <clears throat> Amen. It's the it's the end. That's what God's people want. That's the people of the world want in searching truth and comfort and and hope and good things. That's when you become a light, a salt to the world, and many means. Now, if we don't have that, no wonder the power of Christianity. Hold on, the word is power is. No political power, human worldly power. How about the power of conviction, the power of transformation through the Holy Ghost to change the hearts is a loss because why? Because people think it was hospitals, doctors of human yields. They never think we can introduce to an. To them, to a totally different world, a different, totally different formation of life. With it, a new formation relationship in that life or through that life. Whether you're on the receiving end or accommodation end, or be the ones who serve it and, and you know, to, 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 to share it. The, the priesthood, in a sense. And, um, you know, the sobriety eventually has to, to become a song, right? So, <laughs> I mean, equally song with the song in the sense of equal partners. Those are the images for, from the Bible. But the essence is a kind of relationship you have eventually with God as a kind of a spiritual substance or identity you have in the Lord. Now, that being said, so what are God doing? God is consolidating. God is closing doors, and He will open doors. I believe this message is not a message merely a correction or criticism or judgment, rather a message of hope, a message of revelation, of clarity. Listen, this is what God wants for His people. Unapologetically, we can see that. If God chose Moses, chose uh, before Him, chose Abraham. Then choose David as the three character we use to personify, if you will, um, signify a progress way of God's culture of His people and the equipping of it. You know, uh, and the, 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 they were chosen in their time for no very peculiar purpose. It is not given to anybody. What a foolish Christianity we have. Everybody is a Paul. Everybody is Jesus. Everybody is a Peter. And I want to drag a little bit to tell you certain just man-made beliefs, ideas, to try to solve the, the problems they're facing for time. But the really ne never think it through. But it, this day we continue to use those parameters of their, their environment, if you will, their, their set of struggles 
to, to, to draw doesn't mean we don't do it, you know, so, but to try the template, basically, what I'm going to do, you know, I recently visited a little bit privately. I hope you guys, I don't want to drag everybody in such a conversation at all, but uh, as I just handed it, uh, uh, you know, the, the idea of city church, for example, the idea of home church, home fellowship, that's, those are great ideals that has been presented in different stages of we talking about when church team is aware of it, get out of the walls or something like that. <laughs> behind it, there is a, there is a philosophy behind it. There is a passionate, God-loving, God, uh, I mean, there are beautiful personality behind it. But unfortunately, I had to see that they were never educated by God directly concerning what God wants his people to be. Therefore, able ministers, avid mind, diligent, passionate you know, servants of the Lord want to serve God with their best. What they can do is map out their own ideas. Try to convince this what should be done. And let me prove to you, this is a biblical event. Recently, I ran into this notion called the plural, plurality for leadership. Now, you know me, I, I, I don't I ever argue about have a, 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 a group of leadership to work together. It's my motto through the years to work with others, to pair with others. So my follies, my counsels, my decisions can be checked. I can hold myself accountable in a sense. Because I know I'm, I'm, I'm not good. You know, so I'm not, I'm, I'm have a lot of emotion, a lot of, lot of uh, blurry or fractured or sometimes bias. Some way point point of blind points, whatever, you know, so I'm, I'm not saying I'm doing a good job today. Okay, I'm not saying that. However, in the multitude of council, there is safety. That's what a truth. And Tim, John, and many others and provide that safe net for me and great help for me. But they're talking about, again, I'm not challenging or exhort ourselves to say that we're going to be like this because that we argue certain ideas. I'm talking about Certain mindsets is people use their own life experiences, their own struggles, then craft idea how the body Christ should should function. And it's not just a small matter to say that we should we really promise all problems. It's a matter to present it and this all should be done. This is, this is what is the right way for the body of Christ. Now, again, there is definitely need for counsel, for corporate leadership. But in this kind of engagement, then map it out. It's, it's a way of organizing God's people, <laughs> how to fellowship. One of the things I'm speaking about because there are certain movements always centered on one person's gift or one man's personality and fall into great struggles. Recently, I discussed a little bit with team, not discussions, just handed to him. There are certain things we came from uh, with a great price. The thing God gave to us is not this other blur. <laughs> and then there are certain things, you know, God revealed to me through the years, for example, should God's 
work through his people, through leadership, to take care of jungle, let everything freely grow, or take care of garden. It was a huge challenge for me. How I work with others, partner with others in ministry, to share responsibility, to, 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 to balance me off if I have mistakes or shortcoming or, or setbacks in life, you know? So somebody can make the chair to wrong, you know, when you're wrong with a horse. Now, I'm talking about plural leadership is presented without a true understanding how God leadership works, especially in New Testament model. And I'm, okay, not, I'm not to challenge anybody, okay? So, but you imagine in the day of um, the New Testament, Peter has every day hung around with James to go through everything what he did. So Paul has to go through every time, go to back to Jerusalem and report, and you know those times they don't have phone lines. <laughs> they did give good reports. My point is that the those kind of things is out of a standard, untrustworthy, and sometimes totally misled kind of situations. It's not the place for you to build a healthy, functional, productive ideal of leadership, how it should be. Prescribe the cure to a illness doesn't mean the cure is a real thing. Or should this be the mainstay of our pursuits? So apostle ministry of whatever fivefold or, or those are those terms, am I? We know that true. But what's really God wants to do? Here's a shifting. If we done away thoroughly, fundamentally, the idols of ministry, idolization of the ministry, the serve God in a certain capacity, because certain gifts in a certain way, we're, not, we're going to do some certain movements. This is a great delusion that is befalling God's people, those good peoples. But refuse to engage with the people God already gave to you. Like I hope we are. And God already settled you, bless you with, for example, the coming generation. And take for granted. Continue to move this circle, that circle, this conference, that circle. I mean, shame on you in the end of the day. Why is a shame? Because you're producing lawlessness in the body of Christ. You produce a false illusion, a fantasy for the general believers. And that was never the model, the pattern, the desire of God's people. I mean, never. The local body has to be functional, functioning. Local leadership has to be properly productive. If we don't do those things from the ground up, we have no reason to tell the body of Christ how it should function. Where's the credential? God given credential. Where's the credibility? You don't know how to build a local church or love the body of Christ. You don't know what it means to transfer God's blessing from one generation to another. You don't know what it means to oversight. In the member family, not a natural family, in a healthy way. And those drawings, those appeals, those imaginations has continued to draw different character in our midst, to different endeavor, different argument, different uh, passion. We don't engage directly or confront directly with those things, but it. The day has come. 
is a test. It's clear revelation. Your spiritual vision of life, the foundation of your life, and how you envision you're going to serve the Lord. What a beauty we have. What a more than constellation and encouragement we have. What a kind of a wonderful thing we have in our midst. Ben, I want to tell you something. I never forget the vision I had of you to help us, or maybe me in this vision, you know, to carry a big rock <laughs> on the side of the, the big boulder to build an altar. Then days to come, it's more than just you're going to build an altar for the Lord. You will be the altar. You'll be the rock, if you will. Why? Because you have to do that with your little ones, right? The people you work with, the people you source it with. How you do it? Yes, they had to know the Lord to build it for that relation be formed. But it's also a process for you to enlarge your vision of life, I believe. <laughs> this is more than that's going to be helping. I said, you know, I'll never help again. <laughs> so you need to know God assigned you for you to be a minister in the spirit, in the roles he assigned to you and take a training. Take identification. Take things we may don't like, don't prefer, and knowing God has assigned us in that room to minister in that contest, in that little culture you put in. And you are the ministers of God's culture to transform that little culture. I'm not saying that in a poetic way at all. I'm talking about the whole God works. Whole God really works. Hey, young people, I pray today your eyes will be opened to see the one truly around you, who they are. Listen, this is for young people. When Jesus was in his hometown, when he just started his ministry, he had a hard time go back to his hometown to minister. You know why? You know why? <laughs> because he said, this, 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 this. <laughs> Jesus is a carpenter <laughs> in the shop. Jesus is son of Joseph. <laughs> Jesus, we know Jesus. You grew up with him. He cried one day. <laughs> he was hungry and um, you know, eat my food one day. He, his clothes are torn one day. I had to, had to, had to tell him you know, to, to fix his clothes. You know. His hair was, was, was dirty one day. Not neat. I had to cut his hair. Then when Jesus suddenly said, I'm no longer this one. I, I want to engage the real me with you. The things that matter to you, by the way. Let's talk about the God's business. Their opinions were low of him. He said, you can do that. Even his own brothers, am I? His mother struggles, but... Uh, uh, you know, matter for habits, I guess, struggle. But for the brothers, they struggle with him. Said basically, who who told you to tell us what to do? <laughs> you go take care of your brothers' disciples. <laughs> we don't need you. We don't need you around. Don't make trouble for us. Be the weirdo you want to be. <laughs> it not anymore after he resurrected. <laughs> you know, they're good people. I'm not saying they're bad people, huh? Yeah. Just like you, you're not bad people. <laughs> you don't have a bad heart. But uh, I think for the honor, the respect, and the, 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 the in endorsement, if you will, uh, towards us, including me for sure, Tim, John, 
But today's encouragement to you is to elevate your understanding bigger. Your den, or those called your ankle and ants, the mountains is another creature in the world, a godly woman, a man in the world. If you don't give them robes, you don't receive them in such a way, like the hometown people of Jesus, then God's work cannot be mapped up. It cannot work. It's not because it cannot do miracles. That's what we take away. Really? Well, I think the lost more than just few miracles. They lost the whole privilege for him to be the Lord and they be his people. Where he has to sort it other out, Peter, <laughs> Matthew, said, well, I need a family. <laughs> I need a people who are willing to devote to a, the culture that I want to impart, the vision of God that I want to impart, and I want them to express the will of God in humanity. That I will turn and judge the whole world. Or turn when they believe. Judge it when they refuse to believe. What is your vision? When you being a wonderful son or daughter or brother, sister for one another, do you believe? In the end of the day, do you believe that you are son of God and you're going to receive an education of divine wisdom through God as his ministry given to you? The family bless you. When your dad made a decision, not in his own preference, his own judgment, but he said, I thank God for me to do this. Not just I feel, I think, I prefer, but they step up to say, step up to self, said, I know I'm a priest for this family. I'm a messenger of God's word. I'm a minister of his wisdom. Would you treat them receiving in such a way? Like, not like Ishmael did, but like Isaiah did? Not like the songs so far indeed, and you might not want to hear those stories. The two older sons are in, as much as they were excited about the things, the Lord, but they over carry themselves, <laughs> maybe careless about themselves, with the things that are given to them meant to be holy, meant to be paid special attention to. Let's move on. This is for you, for young people. In 5.27 said, It's good for the man to bear the yoke while he's young. What a yoke. To Jeremiah was a huge yoke. The yoke being a prophet. He continually a, a, a war, bronze war to his own people. He never give up, I mean, to come from them. And God don't allow him to yield. <laughs> so continue a reminder of who their follies, their, their mistakes. And never go to them, apologize. <laughs> God told this young man, said, he, that, that you don't go to them. You know? Let them go to you. <laughs> and then... Suffer all the bad consequences. I think it came the other day. Said it was a through in. The, he ended up in a in a well. They want to kill him, basically, and they did, I believe, eventually. <clears throat> but the yoke is a heavy. Being a prophet for Jeremiah, and and you know the yoke. I to generalize and more would be in our day. 
to be a godly man. I mean, to be a godly son of God, you know. So, but turn with me to, we sum it up, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. So when we, today, take it like the free form, uh, sorry for that, but uh, we need this kind of contest to wrap up a little bit of a closure of a season. And I pray this message might be heard by some. They come to repentance, not the personal grudges. <laughs> As I detect, mostly is about, which is a foolishness, which is the thing provoked the wrath of God towards you. What do you think this is about? You're not fighting a man or personality. You're a stumbling block for God's people and for yourself even to the will of God. Now, that is something maybe over severe, but hey, wake up. Nobody hold personal grudges against you. None of us are know in this leadership, but it is time to move on. We can't accommodate those foolish ways. And by the way, it's a poisonous ways. Poisonous is not just not good. You can live on the shelf. It's something to poison the whole well. It's not content to be just there in the corner. Is wrong want to run the show. Then culture, then the grudge, then the preposition, is it a serpent? In this light, I want the team pray for us. Use the sword, use the rod. Heavenly Father, may your truth, your living word, that you yourself said is alive and active and able to divide, to penetrate, to lay bare, to expose, to defend, to offend, to build up and to tear down. Also, to wash, cleanse, purify, sanctify. May that living word have its desired effect and impact on us and in our own hearts according to your will and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. Then turn with me to Luke chapter, <coughs> Luke the book. I'm going to read the few, ch- few verses. I'm not going to expound at all. I'll read together with you to see how Jesus operated. <laughs> His mindset behind it. Anyway. In 11th chapter 53, uh, 52, he said, a world to you experts in the law, because you have taken away the key to knowledge. Yourself have not entered, and you have hindered those who are entering. Those who are entering. And we declare that, you know, his life is in a bad shape with them. So <laughs> when Jesus left there, the Pharisees, the teacher of the law, began to oppose him fiercely and besiege him with questions, waiting to catch him something he might say. So this warned the disciples, 12 chapter now, speak for two disciples, said, be on guard. Amen. You be on guard against the Pharisees, which is a hypocrisy. One characteristic in this day, the Pharisee spirit said, you have mistreated me. I deserve this. A self 
preservation and prescription what is the righteous way that God should be. Who is the center? Not God's purpose, the center. Your own well-being, your own feeling, the center. As if you are the judgment seat of everything happened to you. That's the arrogance of modern Christianity, a useful spirit. Everything done is about me. <laughs> no, it's nothing about you. That you has to die, has to be discarded as filthy, unworthy of the name of the Lord. But anyway, who said there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known? <clears throat> so you know the story. So. Then the Lord said, continue, said, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. After that, can do no more. Do not be afraid to die. But I will show you whom you will fear. Fear him who after the killing the body, <laughs> there's something you need to pay much attention to. How the part of threw him to hell. And I tell you, fear him. Anyway, so because and kind of things, Eleven said, when you are brought before synagogue, ruler of authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourself or what you will say, which made up the major body of argument to Christianity or oh, passion. We feel that is our business. Far from it. We need to learn to really hear the right teachings. For the Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. So, look at this. Continues the parable rich fall. He used it basically to tell. He's not arbiter or judge of a human affairs. He's not a moral judge. He's not a, a, a human justice judge, in a sense, human, human fairness judge. His word, he said, do not worry about those things of your natural life. And he's not here to make it right for you. In 33, 32 now, do not be afraid. So what do you worry about? What do you need? He said, don't lie like the pagans run after things in the world. 30 said for the pagans. The pagan world run after such things. And your father knows what you need them. But seek his first kingdom, and they thing will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock. May the Lord speak to you. May the Lord look at you with smile right now, with encouragement. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. That's what he had. Then he said, sell your possessions, give to the poor, provide a purse for yourself, will not wear it out, the treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted. Where no thief will come near, no more to choice. But where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now continue. So I want to say something here. We know that, especially applicable to us, when we begin to have possessions, begin to have successes, how we evaluate our decisions, our preferences. 32. Five said, be, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamp burning. What are here speaking? Wow. Dressed, ready for service. That is not something that you self pride. He was somebody being a priest, a honest man. So, where is your lamb? The things hidden under the bush or whatever. That is more than just a lamb of your own making. 
speaking the lamp, the man to shine out the light of God. And then speaking like a man waiting for the mass return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes, knock the door. You know the story. So be watchful, be steady. You never know how he comes. My point here is interesting. Is this about watchfulness? It's given in a contest. Be watchful for what? That is more than just dress properly, receive the Lord properly, or keep the lamb lead so that he can come in the proper time. You know, so when you are in a good state, mind. Everybody was talking about keep the culture of the Lord, of the house of the Lord, in the right place. Seek ye first the kingdom, God's righteousness, and dedicate your life solely. Make that work for your life, not as a one-time movement or devotion, but as a perpetual culture. That's how you should live your life. So the watchfulness is to be understood, if you are well, I'll propose to you, the abomination that caused desolation. You have a charge, the house of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. You need to be aware there is the things and the least the Pharisees, those kind of things, are like a thief, they also come. They defile many and they defile the way God's house is supposed to be. We have this duty. More than be dressed properly and keep the week of the lamb burning and never die out. But we need to be watchful that no thief will come in. The abomination that causes desolation is always seeking its opportune time to become idols, to become upsetters, defilers, of this holy service, this holy place. What this is, this I propose to you, is a host of the Lord. It's a culture that God gave to us. Turn with me to this maze. Maybe saw a confirm team's word. And we talk about the, examining the fruits. Their season that the fruits is examined and the fruitfulness not there. God don't have good result for those things. And then we mentioned a little bit. Ben's question is how we in a sense practically do these things. I mean it's not necessarily in a manual book, <laughs> so, but it definitely in a thinking pattern. In the attitude of the heart, if you will, I had it in the mind. Forgive me, I had some noises. The work machine is working. So, um, turn with me to 13th chapter now. In this place, it said, Team, why not you read it? So I can close it, uh, my noise for you guys. You read on three, 13, 3 to 9, and then 18 to to 20, to 20, yes. Here in uh, Luke, is that what you're referring to? Yes, 13, okay. 13, <clears throat> 9, 18 to, to 21. Amen. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will perish. Then he told this parable. Man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it. 
but he did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Verse 18, then Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree. And the birds of the air perched in its branches. Again, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Now, let's read, please, this. And if you will, read it again. Think about it again. We've been talking about this kingdom of God look like. Let's see how about the culture of God look like. Mm. The kingdom of and come with certain man's ideas the kingdom look like, you know, through the histories of mankind. It's have that nature, but it, what is here talking about is more a culture. How God really rules, how God really changes hearts, ex- wisdom and love through His authority and grace. How He does it, the seed, the simple things, keep working on, and never disappoint. But I want to see if this is a point of view board again and then finish it. Tim, can you read it for us 22 now till 30? Then we, from there, we take encouragement. Well, we are invited to the feast. It's necessary for every believer to go through a certain process to enter and enjoy this feast. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you came from. Then you will say, we ate with you and drank with you and you taught us in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last 